So I've been looking at Substance Designer and I have made this vector displacement map thingy which allows you to do this kind of breakup of um, objects. Um, also you can do various like warping mo modifications. Um, it's quite a simple setup and it's a good little intro to the pixel processor which is very cool. Um, so the pixel processor looks like this and we're going to build out from scratch. So let's bring in a pixel processor. Uh, the pix. And I'm going to edit it. There you go. So the pixel processor does exactly what it says on the tin and um, processes each pixel um, using some mass functions. So what we want to do with this vector displacement map is we want to use two channels of this color input um, to push the incoming pixel um, up and across based on the color of the input. So if we, for example, um, get a color map in like that, right into here, uh, you can see that if I change the red channel, it goes one way. And if I change the green channel, it goes the other way, and that's the kind of key to this. And if the red and green channels are centered like that, then um, oh, yeah, it needs to be one, two, seven, one, two, seven, one, two, seven. So when they're centered, the vector displacement does nothing. They're the same, or, or nearly the same, anyway. Um, so. If we just wire, so we're going to take this then, and we're going to start wiring things in. So let's add a node, and we're going to add a variable get float to. Um, and we're going to wire this to position. So this position variable is the position of the incoming pixel. So this this whole process is going to get calculated per pixel. So this is the uh, position of any pixel that comes into the operation. And what we are going to do is we are going to add a node. We use a sample color node. So if I make this the setters output node, and let's see, I just wire, just wire that in. You can see that the pix processor does nothing because what's happening is um, we're going uh, take the incoming position of the pixel and sample the color at, from the incoming image at that position. So because the color and the pixel up are coming from the same place, uh, we get exactly the same output. So we can uh, modify this with a add operation, say, and delete that. And now what we can say is let's add another node which is a float. Oops, not like that. Uh, you can see this is red, and that's because this is a float 2, which means it's got an x and y value to it, and this is a float, which only has one value to it. So we need to turn this float into a float 2. So we're going to do that by, uh, let's do it like this. Um, well, we can either do it like this, so we've got float 2. That now works, that's green. 
and then we can adjust each element of the float and you can see now we're adjusting the output of our pixel processor essentially what we're saying is take the input position um, add a value to it and then see what um, the pixel color is at, at that new position so we're getting this offset and our position because we're looking at uh, the color in a different place to the input um, and that's kind of the key to the vector displacement map so what, what we're going to do is we're going to add a, another input to our um, sampler some color and we are going to add another input to our pixel processor uh, which I need to remind myself how to do oh there we go um, so we've got input image 0 and input image 1 and we are going to just wire this color into there and then that into there and go back to our pixel processor so um, this one is going to be input image 1 and that's the vector input so now we can go look at the color at this position on our vector map and find um, the actual position on the color map so we've got our vector map here and our color map on this one so we're going to say where is this and find it on our color input um, this sample color has got um, four channels in it it's got um, R, G, B and A so we're just going to nip off two of those so we just want R and um, red and green so we are going to swizzle a float to like this which means that we're going to um, take only two of these channels and turn that into an output so this is why they're in there and you can really see that um, it's having an effect because we've just turned our um, block pattern into a so that's what it looks like when nothing's going on and then when we wire this in it shifts everything around based on our vector displacement map um, if I were to maybe wire something a bit more clear in so let's go to our library and pick some noises and how about these crystals is clear so if I um, wire that into there you can see very clearly now that everything has been shifted around um, so back into our pixel processor function so what we want to do now is make some controls um, so the kind of controls I think are useful is to scale um, this a bit um, and actually what we want to do is we want to um, say that everything moves uh, everything above mid gray moves one way and everything below mid gray moves the other way and we're going to do this by a bit of maths so let's add another uh, so we we'll take this float to and we're just going to set it to 0.5 and 0.5 and we are going to take that and add a node which is a operator, a subtraction operator. So stick that in there, stick that in there. There we go. So now if I wire in, uh, if I find my uniform color and I turn this to grayscale, uh, yeah, color like this. If I turn this to mid gray, and wire it in, you 
you'll see that nothing that happens to that. And in fact, what I could do is if I were to do a blend node here, something like this, and mark it into my pixel processor again. And as I blend um, the opacity, you'll see that everything starts to shift around. Like that. So what I'm going to do is take that sort of blend functionality and program into the pixel processor. So... Um, here, we're going to add a node which is an operator and we want a scalar multiplication because we're applying it to a vector. And we are going to take that, plumb it into that. Some simple thing on here is just wire that quickly there again. Yeah, that's better. Um, so, and we're going to take Let's take that float and then we can dial in our effect like that. And you can make it go backwards like that. So that will scale the amount of the incoming vector. Um, also we can actually scale the um, incoming texture as well, and because of the way we're slicing it up, uh, we can get um, some quite good tiling um, by um, like sort of changing the size of this incoming texture. So let's just take this again. So we've got our vector position. So that's the output. That and take this out just to go here. So if I change that to zero, say, so our vectors is having no effect. We can now dial up and the scale of uh, phi. So we can now change the way this repeats by dialing. that and we can now change that by doing that so uh, the last thing is to set up a library file and we'll do that in another tutorial